Nigerians and those watching beyond our shows. It's my pleasure to welcome you to another edition of a human interest program newsline. I am Jennifer Igwe and Ramadan Karim to our Muslim brothers and sisters. Now the Islamic month of Ramadan is usually for sober reflection and increased devotion by Muslim faithful in the pursuit of the mercy of Allah. It is also the holy month of obligatory fasting. There are activities that go with the spiritual exercise. Our reporter has a feature on it. Then I'm sure you're familiar with the phrase, terms and conditions apply. Sometimes there are hidden clauses that many of us may not really understand, but a lot of us just accept without knowing what lies ahead. I bet you're already saying, that's true. Now, what is the implication? Stay tuned to find out. Then, medical experts the world over won't endorse egg donation if it wasn't safe. So it is medically allowed for a young healthy woman to donate her eggs to help women with fertility challenge. However, some donors may experience complications if the procedure is not well done. And some just do donations for financial gains without adequate knowledge of what it entails. We have more on this, and it's a must-watch. I am sure my colleague Claire Adelabu Abdurazak is also interested in the topic and has something to say. But okay, Claire, hold your peace. Let's take the new segment first. Thank you, uh, Jennifer. I was hoping you, you would uh, wish me happy Ramadan uh, fast. Uh, but since you didn't say that, so let me wish myself. <laughs> All right, welcome to our uh, Abuja Network studio and to the news. Uh, we'll begin with uh, uh, visits Vice President Yami Oshimbajo is expected to be part of celebrations marking the annual Africa Week of the King's College London with the theme Changing Africa in a Shifting Global Landscape. In a statement by Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Office of the Vice President, Lao Luakonde, Professor Oshimbajo's lecture will focus on the question of how Africa can prosper in an increasingly complex world. Now, the King's College London, which was founded by King George IV and the Duke of Wellington in 1829, became one of the two founding colleges of the University of London when the university was established later in 1836. Now, while Nigerians continue to re-echo the impact of the former Chief of General Staff, Je Lieutenant General Oladi Bodia on humanity and nationhood, Glanry Billy was at his residence in Lagos today, where sympathizers singled out the bold and courageous virtue of the late general. 31B at Dekunle Faji Road in Ikeja, Lagos, residence of the late Lieutenant General Ladibo Dia was filled with sympathizers, friends and family members commiserating with one another on the passing of the former Chief of Staff to General Sani Abacha, led military government. Spokesperson on behalf of the family said that the death of Lieutenant General Dia, though sudden, is but providential. We've lost a man who actually made every member of the family, myself, inclusive so we've, it's a big loss to the entire Diaz family. General Dia, as he is fondly called, studied law at the Amadou Bello University, Zaria. He joined the army and rose through the ranks to be appointed as the military governor of Ogun State in 1984 to 1985 and the vice president in the provisional ruling council of the General Sania Bachelet military administration in 1994. 
Lieutenant General Adipo Dia, who would have been 80 on the 3rd of April, died in the holy hours of Sunday, 26th March, in Lagos. In Lagos, Larry Bilei, NTA News. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari mourns the passing on Sunday of Lieutenant General Oladi Bodia, who served as Chief of General Staff from 1993 to 1997 and Vice Chairman of the Provisional Ruling Council in 1994. The President pays tribute, pays tribute to General Dipo's bold and courageous career in the Nigerian military and dedicated service to the country. As General Officer Commanding it to Division, Commandant National War College between 1991 and 1993, Chief of Defense Staff and Military Governor of Ogun State from January 1984 to August 1985. The President recalls that Dia was known for his brilliant, exceptional organizational skills and discipline, and he displayed these virtues and the important roles he held in office as a military officer. The president salutes the former chief of general staff for his love, belief and loyalty to the country he cherished so much and fought gallantly on the front lines to defend her unity. On behalf of the federal government, the president extends heartfelt condolences to Dia's family, friends and colleagues. President Buhari prays that General Dia's soul finds rest with his creator and may his contributions to the nation never be forgotten. Meanwhile, President-elect Bola Ahmed Chinimbo has also sent his condolences to the family of former Chief of General Staff, Lieutenant General Oladi Bodia, who passed on early Sunday morning at the age of 79. While expressing his sadness over the passing of the retired general, Chinimbo praised his contributions to national development and the military institution. In a statement, the President-elect says, General Dia lived a remarkable life of a soldier and he made his mark in the military where he served the country diligently in various capacities. Sending his condolences to Governor Dagbo Abiodo and the people of Ogun State, the President-elect prays Almighty Allah to comfort the family of late Dia and all those he left behind. The Federal Executive Council and other prominent Nigerians have also received with shock the death a former Chief of General Staff, Lieutenant General Oladi Bodia. Our correspondent, Momsu Damien Dati, has the messages. A condolence message by Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, on behalf of the Federal Executive Council, describes General Dia as a seasoned military officer with admirable administrative capabilities in his various functions, as well as a notable statesman who made invaluable contributions to nation building. Fair condoles with the government and people of Ogun State, the Dia family, as well as the military, friends, and associates of the former. Chief of General Staff, former President Olushe Gnobasanjo has also described the life of the late Lieutenant General Oladi Podia as a great success and accomplishment, which would long be remembered after him. Chief Obasanjo, in a release by his special assistant on media, Kainde Akinyemi, described the late Deer as a dedicated and resourceful patriot who served the nation in various capacities as an army officer, community leader, and a legal practitioner, adding that he acquitted himself as a dedicated officer and a real patriot from the thick of the Nigerian Civil War to the post-war reorganization of the army, where he distinguished himself as a seasoned military officer with his rare diligence, loyalty, and resourcefulness. The Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabia Amila, has expressed sadness over the passing of General Oladipo Dia. The speaker recalled Dia's commitment and service to Nigeria during his term in office as CGS and in other capacities and prayed for the repose of the soul of the deceased. Similarly, Ogun State Governor Prince Dagbo Abiodun has commiserated with the government and people of Nigeria on the person of former Chief of General Staff, Lieutenant General Oladi Podia. Abiodun described the departed Army General as a seasoned administrator, gentleman and officer whose contributions to the development of the security architecture of Nigeria will remain indelible, adding that others carried on 
where he left, and Ogun State will not forget Dia's role in its history. And finally, former governor of Ogun State and senator representing Ogun Central, Ibikuli Amosan, says the rank of Nigeria's elder statesmen and significant personalities is further depleted with the death of Lieutenant General Oladipo Dia. Senator Amosun describes the late Deer as an accomplished army general, well regarded for unusual grace upon his life, which ensured that he survived myriad of intrigues and several near-death encounters in his military and public service. Momso Damien Lati, NT News. Let's turn attention now to other stories. And the Chief of Defense Staff, General Lucky Rabo, has identified the lack of specialized training experts as part of the challenges faced by the Operation Safe Corridor of the Nigerian Army in rehabilitating and reintegrating repentant Boko Haram terrorists. The Chief of Defense, the Defense Chief, was speaking at a lecture in Edo State University. Victor Odiacha completes the report. Operation Safe Corridor was established in 2015 as a transitional justice mechanism to reintegrate the surrendered Boko Haram terrorists back to the society and encourage other fighters to lay down their arms. But this is facing challenges in the country. The Chief of Defense Staff, General Loki Irabo, while speaking on the topic, national defense policy and the transitional justice approach in the war against insurgency in Nigeria, highlighted some of the challenges faced by the Operation Safe Corridor in reintegration, rehabilitation and the radicalization of repentant Boko Haram terrorists to include inadequate collaboration and coordination, absence of appropriate legislation and reintegration, low agency and international participation, as well as ineffective monetary system. This impact can also be intangible, such as the collapse of state institutions, trust deficit in government, disruption of social cohesion, psychological trauma and pervasive University Professor Emmanuel Aloyo said the team was selected to address contemporary issues in the country. In this year's Founders' Day ceremony, the Chief of the Senate Defense Staff, General Lucky Rabo, I want to use this opportunity to specially thank you for accepting to deliver this year's lecture titled National Defense Policy and Transitional Justice Approach in the War Against Insurgency in Nigeria that borders around insecurity in Nigeria and the role of the Nigerian army in coping insecurity challenges in Nigeria. There were goodwill messages from stakeholders and representatives of the state governor. Edo State University Uzare was established by an act of Edo State House of Assembly on the 23rd of March 2016 in Uzare, Victor Odion Acha, NTA News. Now, to check cultism, which has become a major social menace in Nigeria's high institutions and also the society, government must prescribe and enforce stiffer penalty for perpetrators and those who abate the crime. Now, this perspective is being pushed forward by the Divisional Police Officer, Federal Housing Innocent Ayabuto, on an NTA Calabar program, Security Watch. Chosin Aitam reports. Increasing rates of cultism in the society has become a growing concern said to be the major cause of violence, killings, robbery, maiming and death in many cases. A security personnel who was in NTA Calabar to feature on the program Security Watch says cultism has taken a different dimension as cult activities are now carried out in public or promoted on different social media handles to garner membership. If a cult is dies, for instance, government should make a legislation so that the body will be confiscated. If somebody uses his house or his premises for cult activity, government can confiscate such houses for public use. Worried by the trend, the police officer who had published a 59-page book on the title, Dangers of Cultism, has also reached out to primary school pupils and secondary school students, enlightening them on the ills of cultism. Once they join the cult, they will be uh, audacious and uh, items will be missing at home. For instance, every cult is, is made to pay dues regularly and they may resort into stealing of their mother's uh, parents' money, phones, uh, other items, in order to sell for them to pay for the dues. To nip cultism in the board, 
The security personnel advise parents to watch out for strange behavior in their children and seek help on time. In Calabar, Justina Etam, NTA News. Now, as a beacon of excellence and for his contributions to human development, the group managing director and chief executive officer, Zenith Bank PLC, Mr. Beniza Onyago, has bagged an award from the University of Nigeria in Suka, Chineyemo, he reports that the award, which is an honorary doctoral degree in business administration, honoris causa, was conferred on him by the chancellor of the university, Oni of Ife. Obade Yenito Gungusi Ojaja III at the institution's 50th convocation ceremony. The event is the University of Nigeria and Suka's 50th convocation ceremony, and here, the sweats, tolls and sacrifices of these worthy graduates and achievers to the growth and development of the institution are grandly celebrated. The honorary doctorate degrees of this university will be conferred on three notable Nigerians who have successfully distinguished themselves in their chosen careers and the service to the country and the humanity. Among them is the group managing director and chief executive officer Zenith Bank PLC, Mr. Ebenezer Unyagu, who was conferred with an award of honorary doctorate degree in business administration, honoris causa, by the chancellor of the university. Because you have proven yourself an exceptional business administrator. The rest of the year is validating the good initiative of affirming corporate Presented by the Minister of State for Education, President Muhammad Buhari wants the University of Nigeria and Suka to emphasize on trainings in entrepreneurship to enable graduates to become job creators and not job seekers. A former governor of Delta State, Dr. Emmanuel Udwahan, and a former executive director of marketing, NTA headquarters, Abuja, Mrs. Ife Inwa Uzodema, were among those awarded honorary doctorate and doctorate degrees in many disciplines. It is said that to whom much is given, much is expected. And so, these Nigerians are invited to help in reinvigorating, re-energizing, and reinventing the tonic of the university. From the University of Nigeria, Amsuga, Chineye Moe, NTN News. And for the FCT residents, the breathing is a sigh of relief as the days of hardship characterized by difficulty to access cash seems to be over now. Now, Rosemary Motelang Bilal visited commercial banks in the metropolis to monitor compliance to the CBN Directive for Weekend Banking aimed at dispensing cash, and this is what she brought back. Past weeks have been tough for Nigerians due to lack of cash. The CBN's directives that banks operate on Saturdays and Sundays came as a welcome development. Visit to banks in the nation's capital reveals compliance to the directive with various amounts paid out over the counter. FC2 residents express gratitude for this development, which is expected to further open up the economy. Yes, very, very small transaction. I just walk in and got all I needed. I came around to get uh, cash and I was able to get it. They appeal to the federal government and the CBN to sustain the directive over the long period until the situation normalizes. Penn Central Bank will continue with these uh, temples. I'm very, very happy. The federal government have tried. And I pray they do more. And Nigerians will be happy. Emeka Okengu, a development economist, commended CBN for coming out with the policy. About two months ago, it had you know, announced that they are putting over 80% or more of the monies that were outside the banking system, which was one of the major reasons that they embarked you know, on, the, on the redesign you know, uh, project. It's a good development. It's a welcome development. People are happy. The situation in banks today was that of jubilation, unlike previous weeks. Rosemary Motel and Bilal, NTA News. What can we say? 
All right, this is the news on Newsline. We'll be right back. Don't go away. From the 3rd of May to 7th of May 2023, the National Population Commission will be conducting a comprehensive population and housing census to generate reliable, sustainable, and up-to-date data needed for policy formulation, security, national planning, and development. Population and housing census, it will make life better, eh? National Population and Housing Census 2023. It's your civic responsibility. Please support it. The 2023 Population and Housing Census is being conducted by the National Population Commission. Personal Digital Assistance PDAs will be deployed countrywide for the census exercise. Nigeria's 2023 Population and Housing Census. You count. Be counted. Are you a dealer in cars, jewelry, precious metals and stones and luxury goods? Are you into real estate or are you an estate agent, surveyor, valuer, developer or broker? Are you into the hospitality industry, lottery business or are you a mortgage broker, tax consultant or an accountant? Do you have a supermarket, pools betting and consulting or construction company? If you have, go and obtain your certification from the Special Control Unit Against Money Laundering, SCUMOL, and be free to do your business within the ambits of the law. SCUMOL has the responsibility to monitor, supervise and regulate the activities of designated non-financial business and professions, DNFBPs, across the country. Please note that the SCUMOL certificate is not a guarantee of legitimacy of any business. To register, visit www. .org. For collection of certificate, visit any EFCC office nearest to you. Remember, registration is free. SCOMO, securing Nigeria's business environment. This message is from Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. OVM Mayor. Oh, I wish you were here. I'm always with you. But it's not the same without you. <laughs> And 5G's amazing technology will change how we experience life and the internet. Get ready to encounter the incredible and remember, no juju, na MTN 5G. The Nigerian Army wishes to inform the general public and all interested qualified candidates of the commencement of online registration for 85 regular recruit intake for trades, non-tradesmen and women into the Nigerian Army. Applicants must be single and Nigerian citizen by birth and must possess national identity card, national identification number or BVN. All applicants must possess at least a minimum of four passes in not more than two students in WASC, GCE, NECO or NAPTE. Applicant must not be less than 18 years and not more than 22 years for non-tradesmen and women. Why tradesmen and women must not be more than 26 years as at commencement of training by 15th June 2023. Measurement in height, at least not less than 1.68 meters and 1.65 meters tall for male and female candidates respectively. Interested candidates are advised to log on to the NA recruitment website https.recruitment.ami.mail.ng to complete online registration from 1st March to 5th April 2023. The application form for enlistment into the Nigerian Army is free. Brigadier General Aminu Mustafa Garba, Director, Directorate of Army Recruitment, Resettlement and Reserve. Announcer. New So Clean Concentrated Detergent. Two times the work, two times the speed, two times the strength. To win, we know what it takes. New So Clean 30% Concentrated Detergent. Now with two times the cleaning power. So Clean. For a faster, brighter, cleaner wash. With two times the cleaning power. So Clean, the official regional partner of Paris Saint Germain. Metro Digital Satellite TV has arrived. You can now watch all your favorite football leagues Premier League, Champions League, 
La Liga and others. Wrestling, movies, news, documentary, and general entertainment. Over 45 HD channels. All these for only 5,000 Naira monthly. Call or visit our website to find a dealer near you. Metro Digital TV, the home of entertainment. All right, welcome back. And this is the news on Newsline tonight. The governorship candidates of different political parties in Kaduna State who contested against the governor-elect, Senator Obasani, have accepted the defeat in good faith as they visited him to express their commitment to working together in the interest of moving the state forward. Our correspondent, Mohamed Omar Jingi, tells us more. It's about a week now after the Kaduna State governorship election, which the APC candidate Senator Obasani was declared winner by INEC. These governorship candidates from different political parties like the PRP, Action Alliance and many others are here to inform the governor-elect that they have accepted the defeat in good faith. Almighty is above all, he's the one that gives power and he has given uh, this victory to His Excellency Senator Obasani and that's why we are here uh, to discuss with him and then to see how we can work together. Leadership is from Allah. Allah has chosen him for us. So all I'm calling on our people is to rally around. Let's help him. It's God that made the people to choose him. So we need to work together. And I've offered my service. I've offered myself to work with him. The governor-elect was excited with their submissions of believing in the outcome of the election says politics is over now. It is time for governors to carry everybody along. In the election, there's always one winner. But uh, in this case, I believe we're all winners. Because we all believe in Kaduna State. We believe in moving Kaduna State forward. And I look at the manifesto of virtually all the political parties, particularly the seven of you that are here. We have many things in common. We need in Kaduna is unity. We must be united if we want to move Kaduna State forward. We are one family. And I believe with our unity, we can achieve whatever we plan to achieve. A group of pastors and reverends also visited the governor-elect to congratulate him, promising to work together for the peace and progress of the state. And he's someone that is actually a detribalized Nigerian. And I believe that he's going to unite people. The governor-elect called on all politicians and stakeholders in the state to come and join hands with him to bring development for the people of Kaduna State. In Kaduna, I'm Muhammad Umar Ajingi, NTN News. As Ramadan enters day four, a lecturer in the Department of Religion and Philosophy, University of Jos, Dr. Yusuf Abdullahi Yusuf, is asking Muslims to ensure that their public and private life reflects the teachings and practice of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now, this was at the 12th annual Ramadan lecture organized by NTA Network Center, Jos. Statue Muhammad Kaffa reports. The annual Ramadan lecture attracted Islamic scholars, imams, and other distinguished guests. Speaking on the theme of the lecture, the ideal role of the Muslim trader before and during the Ramadan, the guest speaker urged Muslim traders to be fair and just and desist from acquiring illegal wealth. He says, illegal wealth attracts the word of Allah, adding that emphasis should be on the people's welfare through arms giving. It is expected that any Muslim before he embarks on any act or any form of training must have the basic knowledge of what Islam said or what Islam prescribed for him to succeed in his business. Chairman of the event and former Director General of NTA, Yakubu Ibn Muhammad, represented, commended the Center for sustaining the annual lecture, describing it as timely. It is my hope that uh, after giving so many examples by the discussants and the guest speaker as to the undoings of some of our creditors, that these creditors will fear Allah and have a change of heart. The Zonal Director, NTA Network Center Joss, Rifkatu Daniel, says NTA will continue to educate the public on programs geared towards peaceful coexistence for national development. Goodwill messages came from the Emir of Wase and other dignitaries advising traders to be just and fair in their businesses during and after Ramadan. 
in Jos. So I to Muhammad Kafa and a news. All right. And in the month of Ramadan, there are certain rules that Muslims all over the world should abide by for a fast that will translate to dedication and worship of Allah. In our next report, Lukman Hassan spoke with some Islamic clerics on deeds expected of them during this holy month of Ramadan to acquire the prescribed reward. The month of Ramadan is the ninth month in the Islamic calendar where Muslims observe fast for a period of 29 or 30 days, depending on when the new lunar month is cited. Muslims are therefore reminded that the month is a period when the worship of Allah must be intensified according to Islamic teachings. This month, we encourage Muslims all over the world to imbibe the culture of reciting the Quran every moment, every time so as to be able to understand the content and be able to know their role. During the month of Ramadan, it is very, very important to keep up our five-time daily prayer regularly and punctually. And to fast according to the rules and regulations laid down by the Holy Quran and the Sunnah of Holy Prophet. Some Islamic clerics called on Muslims to use the month to pray for the peace and progress of the country and double their efforts towards assisting the less privileged. Has to do with pious. Our prayers has to be observed in congregation. Our nawafil has to be observed as at when due. Likewise, those things that we abstain from before the commencement of Ramadan should be totally abstained from during the month of Ramadan. They further urge Muslims to pray for all those elected in the just concluded election to succeed in their administration. Lokman Hassan, NTA News. Now, away from the Ramadan to weather matters, the Nigerian Meteorological Agency, NIMET, has warned that weather temperature across some cities in Nigeria will rise above normal in the coming days. NIMET, in a statement released this Sunday, says temperature is expected to rise above 40 degrees Celsius in the next 48 hours. It states that states that might experience this high temperature are parts of Kebi, Sokoto, Zamfara, Taraba and Adamawa. While most parts of the northern cities are expected to record temperatures between 35 and 40 degrees Celsius, the statement further warns that cities like Bochi, Gombe, Borono and Yola are at risk of experiencing high thermal discomfort. Naimut therefore advises people in those locations to drink a lot of fluid throughout this period to avoid dehydration. Now, people living with disability often draw our sympathy. But Annie Daniels was with a number of them and says that they insist on getting included in the scheme of things rather than giving them arms or feeling pity for them. Bola Ringwa, Elizabeth. Yemi C. Salami and Azum Takali are among people living with disability. I had a car accident in year 20, uh, 2002. As a result of the accident, the only means of my survival was to amputate my hand. I'm a national athlete. I'm into athletics. I do throws, short put, discus, and javelin. I'm into amputee football, female falcons. I play football with one leg too. They say they are ready and willing to contribute their wealth of knowledge to the growth of the society. We provide for women with disability equal as um, access to sexual and reproductive health. These people under the edges of network of women with disability insist that discrimination is a bain to optimal performance in their chosen careers. People will tell us that we cannot work, we, have, we cannot see. So they, because of that, they, you, they fail to give us work. Can you see very well? Yes, I can see. I can see to, very well. I can see to some extent. And even we can use magnifying glasses to assist our, our vision. They should give us those access, make the working place accessible, have ramps, accessible toilets, as a, have a accessible walkways, you know, of course, parking lots and some other things. We also need health, uh, accessible health facilities as well. The message is clear. People with disability are humans like other members of the society and they desire a level playing ground and opportunity to prove their worth as responsible citizens. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, 
NTA News. And some residents of our world community in a Wekuru local government area of Ugon State have been displaced from their homes as rainstorm destroyed over 200 houses in that community. Yemi Dalimo has details of the natural disaster that occurred on Thursday, March 23. The Agerian Awuwu community in Ewekuru, local government area of Ogun State, is known for the cultivation of cassava, its value chain, and other agricultural produce. On Thursday, March 23rd, 2023, the community experienced heavy downpour accompanied by snowballs and windstorm, which led to the destruction of over 200 houses. Look at my room. Look at my everywhere. Look at my house. Nobody can support me. I said, God. I beg the government to come and support me. I need help to return here. Moved by the magnitude of the destruction, Obasaka, Adelola Matemilola, Oluwu of Owu Kingdom in Nabeokuta Ogun State, whose domain extends to Awowu, the traditional ruler of Awowu town, Oba Abdugafar, Olasu Committee Jani, and six other traditional rulers in Owu Kingdom, visited the affected victims to sympathize with them. You can see some of them are really having to shelter still inside a single room where the house has almost collapsed. Uh, and I really want to, you know, uh, implore the state and federal government to come to our aid to support the people, to help them get back onto their feet somewhat. It's a terrible thing that we are not expecting at all. But thank God there was no any casualty. Thank God we can take rescue for some of the people that we, can, we think we can help on time. The residents appreciated the royal fathers for their financial support and appealed to government and well-meaning Nigerians to assist them in rebuilding their damaged houses. In Abelkuta, Yemi Dalimo, NTN News. All right, time to join our, my colleague Badi Adeleye for some sports stories. Aimba International were held to a one draw by Group A leaders Bendel Insurance in their Nigeria Premier Football League match the 10 counter, which was live on 98 on Sunday. A maker Bioma shot the People's Elephants into the lead from the penalty spot in the 43rd minute before league top scorer Imadio Sarankoy drew the visitors level in the 81st minute to ensure spoils were shared. And the shot to run! Division will chuck it away from 12 yards. And in case Imade chooses to go low, what a hit! What a fabulous goal from Imade Osarenhoe! In other matches played in Group A on Sunday, Aqua United beat Shooting Stars to nil. Quara United and Plateau United also recorded wins of the same margin over Okanemi Warriors and Gombe United, with Remo Stars edging out Nasarawa United 1 nil. In Group B, leaders Lubi Stars were shocked 2 nil by Doma United. Enugu Rangers beat Bayosa United 2 1, while Rivers United and Abia Warriors drew 1 all. In the meantime, the Super Regals of Nigeria are now in Bissau ahead of Monday's Africa Cup of Nations qualifying encounter against Guinea Bissau. The 2013 African champions had a fuel of the September 24 stadium pitch Sunday evening as they seek revenge against the hosts. The Jotos shocked the Eagles 1 0 in Abuja on Friday to shoot to the top of the group standings with seven points, while Nigeria dropped to second with six points. Similarly, ahead of next month's international friendlies in Turkey, head coach of Nigeria's Super Falcons, Randy Wardrum, has extended invitation to 23 players with regulars like Aziza Toshuala, Rashidat Ajibadi, and Captain Onomebi, also included. The nine-time African champions have a date against World Cup-bound Haiti Women's National Team on Friday, 7th April, before taking on World Cup co-hosts New Zealand on Tuesday, 11th April. With sports update, Badi Adeleye, NT News. All right. Thank you, Badi Adeleye, for the sports update. While we pray, we also keep our fingers crossed for the Super Eagles in Guinea Bissau. All right. That's the news from uh, Abuja Network Studios. Time now to hand you over to 
Jennifer Igwe in Lagos for continuation of Newsline. Jennifer. Claire, I join you in that prayers and a special Ramadan Karim to you. Thank you for joining us for Newsline proper. Now, still on Ramadan, Elori, the Kwara state capital, is agog with spiritual activities as the Muslim faithful engage in the Ramadan fast. Khadijat Akumbi captured the activities for Newsline. One way through which a person can be traced to his roots is his mother tongue. This seems to be lacking in many young Nigerians today. I grew up in the, in the West here and most times I was communicated with English. I saw these girls chatting in both Yoruba and English languages. In the course of our conversation, I asked if they could write a composition about themselves in Yoruba language. <laughs> For the day's fast begins with the early morning meal known as Sahur. This is part around about in the land of the Kwa State capital. It's exactly 3 30 in the morning and the streets are deserted. But right now, in many Muslim homes in the Lauren, the women are busy. This group of youths embark on the task of waking up the Muslim faithful early in the morning to prepare the Sahur. We are not doing it because of money. We are doing it because of God. Dr. Saudat Salah Dubaki, a university lecturer, wakes up as early as 2 o'clock in the morning to observe the superrogatory prayer and also engages in the recitation of the glorious Quran, after which she starts the preparation of the early morning meal. It is the consciousness of waking up to observe that right that is so important. And as a woman, I've always grown up to, uh, to realize the tradition that I have to wake up to prepare meal for myself and my family. For Haji Abukis Oladimeji, a public servant, waking up early to prepare the early morning meal for her family is always a delight. Waking up during the month of Ramadan is a pleasure as a Muslim woman, is an additional reward. Yes, because in addition to our regular supplication, we are going to be rewarded for waking up to prepare food for the family. Every aspect of your life is guided during this holy month of Ramadan. And that is why at the end of the month of Ramadan, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Wasallam says, you come out of it as if you have never committed any sin. During the daytime, the mosques are always filled to capacity as we well faithful observe congregational prayers and also attend Ramadan lectures organized by various Islamic organizations. <laughs> Preparation for the breaking of fast is a big deal in many Muslim homes. For Hajja Idi Amin, a legal practitioner, it is always a pleasure to serve our family members some shows meals to break their fast. I'm happy doing it. And besides, it attracts a whole lot of reward, you know, feeding my family, feed, feeding people in the environment, and even doing every act of kindness, you know, attracts reward during the month of Ramadan. <laughs> signals the end of the day's fast and for the Muslim faithful who engaged in the spiritual exercise it is all thanks to Allah for witnessing the end of the fast for the day. Just sincerely also had a nice time in breaking my fast with the Amin family and it was a memorable moment. We thank God for this um, wisdom for a lot of people to join in the fast. And I think I know some people who just like the aspect of breaking the fast. Very important for them. Now, one notable feature of the canary, also known as Bari Bari in house of people, is the special way a child in the family is named, which is symbolic to either happenings around the area when the child was born or circumstances surrounding his birth. Well, Marjana to Hassan in this report tells us everything one needs to know about the culture that is still in vogue.
The Kanuri tribe predominant in Borno, found in Yobi and some parts of Niger Republic, among other neighboring countries, considered one of the most conscious of everything about their culture and tradition. Some of these culture and traditions are visible in their marriages, races, food, royalty, education, and businesses. The uniqueness of the tribe also goes down to the way a child is given a name based on the circumstances he or she was born or an event that took place at his birth, among many other reasons. Names like Bana, Babagana, Yagana, Yana, Rawana, Bunu, Kadei, Zarabe, Aminami, Fandau, Ia, Ruwaya, Yagumsu, Maira are few among such names within the Kanuri family. Jonah. <laughs> Respect equally plays an important role in the culture, hence alternative names are given to honor the person, for instance, the royalty, elderly, in-laws, parents, husband, and even the wife as well as uncles and aunties. Names like Bana, Yana, Bani are often replaced with the original ones. While other names are Arabic names but are altered by the Kanuri dialect, such as Abo, meaning Abu Bakr, Ari, meaning Ali, Umara is Umar, Yarima is Halima, Falmata is Fatima, while Buni is Ibn Umar. In the royal family, names like Gumsu, Moran, Goni, Shatima, Zanna are also symbolic. An iota of respect because of the personality. And most names in Kanuri is either going to be Ibrahim, Muhammad, Abu Bakr, Umar, Ali. Kanuri fine name is an attachment of respect. This is the emblem of respect. One interesting thing about the tribe is that even when enrolling their children to school, they are never registered with the original names, even though some of the modern generation parents are not doing so. Interesting. And just like in other parts of the country as well, names are very symbolic. We don't just name people. We uh, wake up some, one, one morning and name a child, maybe like Shoemaker, Calendar, April. There is a reason for um, how we name our children, and the names usually have deep meanings. Now, have you ever been in the midst of people whose language you do not understand and they kept talking and laughing? I suppose you felt ignored and probably thought they were gossiping about you, right? It happens, especially if you do not get along with one or two people or many of them. Annie Daniels witnessed a scene like that and had to intervene with an interesting solution. One way through which a person can be traced to his roots is his mother tongue. This seems to be lacking in many young Nigerians today. I grew up in the, in the West here and most times I was communicated with English. I saw these girls chatting in both Yoruba and English languages. In the course of our conversation, I asked if they could write a composition about themselves in Yoruba language. <laughs> I would like interpret it in English first, then in my head I'll start putting it in Yoruba. So we don't really communicate in Yoruba like that. So it's not like we're not Yoruba, but you know, we don't, even at home we don't speak Yoruba like that. What about figures and colors like 5,000, yellow, purple? Egg five. Egg <laughs> What's number 500 in Yoruba language? <laughs> Number 500, okay. Even the small ones I know, it's my grandma, when my grandma wants to send us message, that like 29, they said 29 is muy maru. The majority of our children doesn't hear us. They don't even travel home. When you talk to them about home, they say for what? They call those that are home witches and wizards. Did I hear you laugh? But whose duty is it to make a child appreciate culture, language, and other traditional ways of life? Mother is the first agent, is the first person, is the first point of contact. That's what makes it a mother thong. 
Aware of the dangers embedded in losing a language, the Lagos state government came up with a plan to make the learning of indigenous languages compulsory in its junior schools. Some concerned Nigerians have created other programs as well. People want to learn. People want to know. So we export people from America to go and teach them around the side of the thing. And some even come here to study Yoruba or Ifa. All these Oromila and all those, all the gods or goddess and all that that we have here. It's not the same way you speak Yoruba here. It's not the same way they speak it in Bene, for instance, and maybe Togo and all that. So we came together and we looked at the orthography of what makes up these languages, and then we came up with one uniform way. It should be something that we encourage. I teach mathematics most time. You know, I have seen videos or clips of people teaching mathematics with mother tongues. And I believe when you teach people with mother tongues, they seem to en en enjoy it and understand better. If you are in the midst of people and um, you cannot speak um, uh, English, um, it, I mean, they look at you as somebody who, has, who is an illiterate. I think that should, that's a negative um, um, thought. Either Yoruba, either Hausa, either Igbo. If they make it compulsory for primary school and secondary children, it, it will help Nigerian too. In the end, the pride of a nation lies in its cultural heritage. And for these components to survive in Nigeria, Parents and institutions must make frantic efforts to instill in children a sense of pride in their culture and traditions. They should also be allowed to visit and spend time in their villages. I doubt if there is a place without the good, the bad and the ugly. Thank you, Annie, for that report. Some people don't want to go to their villages because they feel... They have evil people there. And Annie just said something, we have the good, the bad, and there's also great things to talk about and to learn. So language is very important, and you can also learn where you are, not necessarily um, going to the village. So the school will help a lot. Now, the Spanish embassy in Nigeria is capitalizing on the use of music as a universal language to strengthen its ties with Nigeria. The initiative, known as vis, -vis is scouting for music talent in Nigeria, and as part of its reward mechanism, two young and upcoming Nigerian artists will perform at a an elaborate Spanish festival later this year. Michael Olaleye reports. From the salsa flamenco to the ento, the Spanish styles of music are noted for their distinct blend of guitar, which add flavor to the entire performance. Now imagine a combination of some of the best bees in Nigeria collaborating with the rich sound from Spain. That is exactly what the long-term partnership of this platform, known as Visa V, we eventually translate to, and preludes to the actualization, 12 different young artists in the Nigeria music industry showcase their talents. Daughter to the legendary reggae musician Raskimono held the audience spellbound with evergreen singles that we continue to resonate. The drum goddess Aralola thrilled the audience with a mastery of the talking drum while Baba Ujonugwa went the African way. The attraction is understandable as two lucky winners will get international exposure. And the prize for two of them will be to, to play this summer in Madrid in our music festivals. It's a program that 
uh, what does is to plant seeds for the future. To both Nigeria and Spain, the partnership is a public diplomacy that we entrench the quest for cultural exchange. With exposure on international platforms like this, uh, Nigeria will become uh, um, what Brazil, what football is to Brazil. It's where you find just the best in the talent. And I know for sure that in Africa, Nigeria has the best uh, creatives. Uh, and I think putting them or giving them the opportunity to interact with internationals like this, I think the sky is the limit. I think this is just going to grow. Culture, in this case music, is the best way to know each other much better. So through culture, you can know me much better and I can know you much better. So the relations between Spain and Nigeria will be much better. It's always good for, a, for especially when we're collaborating culturally, it's always good for a better world. Apart from enjoying diplomatic ties which spans over 50 years, Nigeria and Spain's relationship is also deeply rooted in sports with the La Liga world of football. And key players signatory to this arrangement are hoping this will deliver more gains to both parties like previous partnerships. wonderful initiative and i think we have a lot with this uh, in common with the spanish we love sports and music and i'm sure if you go to spanish the way we gather to watch football and sing and dance i'm sure they do the same there so that is how powerful music and sports are time for a break newsline will continue right after where is glory excuse me ma'am Oh, where glow now? I don't hear you. Glow, glow, don't go village. Tie all our customer abi. Everybody pay attention. See, now glow break it at 10x. Now he might they take attention, my customers. Now he they dash me 10 times the credits when I load. Why even some me double data join? Eh? Yeah. yeah. Wait, so, so with one fire, we they give all of us, so you they enjoy up to 15,000 naira credit and data. And I say I never finish you. See, if we enjoy, if we not join Glow Berekated 10x, we we'll go get 1,000 naira welcome credit. You just carry your phone. Dial star 777 Ash. Finish. Glow, you don't win. Oh, now see there yet. Hello. Please, I'm looking for Glow. Please save now Glow with the fine. Now Glow with the go. Okay, so enjoy 10 times the value of your recharge on Glow Berekated 10x. You also get 1,000 naira for calls and data and double data bonus on your subscription. Fighting here and there. We don't want it at all. Killing people today, tomorrow, we don't want it at all. And we don't want separation. You do your own, I do my own. Make you they go. My kid, I, no, 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 no. We don't want that one. We may quarrel and disagree, but let it be on the table of dialogue. No blood, chaos, war, violence. Let us stand with our nation as one people. And we must also stand for the armed forces. There are our husbands and wives. There are our brothers and sisters. Please support the armed forces whose lives are always on the front line to protect our nation. Nigeria is your own. Nigeria is mine. Nigeria is our own. Our uniqueness is in our oneness. Our oneness is our strength. New Nivea Dry Deodorants. With 72 hour reliable odor protection from Dual Effect Formula. For a dry and fresh skin feeling. Feel dry, fresh, and confident every day. baby is always running around but keeping up is easy with a Huggies nappy pants because the 360 comfort fit waistband makes it easy to open easy on easy off so my baby can keep on exploring in the heat of the summer Okada seats feel like hot plates and Danfo buses feel like extremely hot ovens walking on the road feels like walking on hot coals 
cope with this heat. Mm, and how do I cope with that bad odor? By staying five degrees cooler. Body odor is caused by germs. And on hot days, the sweating and the odor are more. That's why you need to get the new improved Dettol Cool Soap, which offers up to 5 degrees instant cooling sensation and protects you from 99.9% odor-causing germs. Dettol 5 Degree Cool Soap is endorsed by the Nigerian Medical Association. OVMA. Oh, I wish you were here. I'm always with you. But it's not the same without you. MTN 5G's amazing technology will change how we experience life and the internet. Get ready to encounter the incredible and remember, no juju, na MTN 5G. We don't like to eat better. More nutritious meals, more veggies, but we want it tasty and easy too. Hmm. No cubes. That's the secret. Made with real ingredients like chicken, parsley, and garlic. And enriched with iron, so your meals are better for you. And more delicious, too. That's the cocoa. Let's give it some accolades. Change your world by changing what's on your plate. Welcome back. In sports, when a small club beats a top team, it is called upset. In an election, however, it is the person with the highest ballots, irrespective of age or status, that carries the day. Most recent example is the trending story of a 34-year-old young, a 34-year old man, young man, Lawan Musa, who floored the seven speaker Yobe State House of Assembly in the Nguru two state constituency election. This feat goes to show that the not too young to round bill signed by President Muhammad Buhari in May 2018 is encouraging youth participation in the nation's democracy. Bashir Ibrahim Nababa reports. Jostling for the 24th state assembly seat in Yobe State reaches its climax at the just concluded March 18th elections. Goro 2 state constituency, however, produced one of the much talked about results in the public domain and sections of the media in recent days for one reason. This is because this unknown young chap, Musa Lon Majakura, and the holder of HND in business administration and management, who volunteers as a school teacher but with no political experience, contested on the platform of the People's Democratic Party and scuttled the six-term bid of the current speaker, Yobe State House of Assembly. The 34-year-old proud fisherman Musa says fishing is the main source of his livelihood and with it also support his constituents as well as his political ambition based on appeals from the electorate to contest. On why he joined politics, the member-elect simply answered that he wants to utilize his position as a lawmaker to empower and bring more developments to his people, considering that they are lagging compared to their counterparts across the state. I want to assure that my constituency, I shall give them good representation. It is just a matter of time when this fisherman town legislator will be inaugurated in the 8th Yobe State House of Assembly after expiry of the tenure of the current lawmakers. From Damaturu, Bashir Nababa. News. This is quite inspiring. The kind of things we see in other nations where you don't have to be elitist to represent your people. Very, very good development for our democracy. Terms and conditions apply is a popular cliche in advertising campaigns. Mobile applications, social media services, and even use of products as well as access to warranty. 
Amidst the growing popularity of online loan services, some Nigerians who have simply clicked the word agree without painstakingly perusing stringent terms attached have, made, have been made to face unforgettable embarrassments for ignorantly defaulting on terms and conditions. Joel Pupola sought to know why many are often in a hurry to agree to what they never read. Despite the popularity of the phrase terms and conditions apply, many Nigerians do not even know the essence of the agreement they simply sign for. For instance, every internet application or service like internet banking, social media apps, and websites all have terms of views, but many often realize this when they are sanctioned through restrictions or blocking of services and other punitive measures. But how many Nigerians take time to carefully read terms and conditions applicable to the service they subscribe to? No, they don't ask for it. Hmm? I didn't, I didn't. Why didn't you sign, read and sign? <laughs> I'm not from a You look at the agreement, what um, the stuff actually entails, before you can actually click, um, click accept. But if you don't do that, you don't know what um, the stuff is all about. Privacy policy, the you read mm. it? Why? I don't get much time on reading. What I want to know is what happened to the other states, what happened to maybe where I'm not around. With the proliferation of online loan hubs that often includes terms and conditions which allows access to phone contacts, pictures, messages, social media accounts, and other sensitive details, many Nigerians and their loved ones have had harrowing experiences for defaulting on the outlined terms in such hubs. Many high-interest loan companies take extreme measures to retrieve funds. Some of my boys, they hold us. This social -so person is a fraudulent, is a thief that you owe money. So, yeah, you should as disassociate yourself with him. Everything. And this teacher is one of many Nigerians who have learned the hard way through their actions. I can say 99% of us Nigerians don't actually take patience to go through those times of condition. There was a time I made a mistake and I defaulted. Then the next thing that I was getting calls from my close uh, relatives. But I know that if I had taken the pain to read those terms of condition, I wouldn't have fought vict victim of such a harassment and embarrassment. Ignorance, they say, is not an excuse under the law. Legal practitioner Moruf Balogun advised Nigerians to endeavor to read and understand terms and conditions before consenting to them. The moment you sign a contract, it means that you have submitted yourself to that particular contract. The terms and conditions of the contract are bound on you. So if, if you agree on illegal terms, the law says that there is no contract in the first place. So, no matter how voluminous, always take time to study and comprehend the terms and conditions you are signing for. We are all guilty of this, especially online, because sometimes you, you're, you're trying to do a research or looking for information and you open a website and the long agree, uh, terms pop up and sometimes it can be so cumbersome, but in those write-ups they have clauses that, um, that are very key and can put you in trouble, so we have to be really careful. Now, away from terms and conditions, let's go to another interesting aspect. Donation of eggs by younger ladies in their 20s, for instance, for reproductive purposes is common. They also receive payment for the procedure. It's not free. Amakawo, in this report, examines the advantages, disadvantages, and the position of the law on this. December year 2022, the internet went agog when a Lagos-based clergyman raised alarm over the state of his daughter's health after it was alleged that she donated her eggs. Newsline made attempts to investigate the matter and this response showed it was done with full consent. We've gone through all, all the documents submitted at the clinic. It shows that the doctors did due diligence. This lady signed the consent forms. 
they understood everything. They were able to prove that they were above 18. They provided the account details for payments. They were told of the side effect that they would get for a few days after the procedure. They understood everything and they, they, they signed the forms and they, they donated their eggs and got paid. And so far, we've been able to establish that. Although there are legal perspectives to egg donation, experts say that beyond the monetary gains donors get from it, there is need for proper sensitization and knowledge so they can understand any implication involved. As a doctor, you are supposed to explain the procedures, explain the outcome, whether adverse or otherwise. You are supposed to explain all this to your patient before they sign. And always get somebody to witness the signature. That way you are exonerated. And for a period of two, two weeks, maybe 10 to 14 days, you will take injections. And when the ovaries have built enough or generated enough eggs to be harvested, Experts also say, although egg donation helps many women struggling with infertility, there are certain drawbacks. There is some, uh, some risk, there are some short-term complications, which are probably known more, and then also um, long-term complications, about which we don't know much. So I believe that women who are donating eggs should be kind of um, follow up some years um, into the marriage and married life, what happens with, with the fertility after that. There is persons who lose an ovary, there is um, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, there is stroke, there is blood clot, eggs and the sperm, wherever they get, that eventually siblings will marry and will have a, an increase, an upsurge in um, incidents of the blue blood um, sort of disease where siblings are marrying. Since young people are mostly involved in sperm or egg donation, we hit the streets of Lagos to get their views on the matter. I'm going to be releasing my child to somebody I don't even know for on top how much. I'm proud that I can help somebody that cannot give birth. I've heard about it before, but the objective of selling it is to make money and use it for, for their personal means. Okay, but you, can you sell your own? I, can, I can't do it. Why? I just can't do it. The fertility clinic is a booming industry in Nigeria. Experts advise that consent of prospective donors be accepted only when they have been made to fully understand the weight of the decisions. This can also avert any litigation issue that may arise rise in future get adequate information and don't just get carried away because you want to make money then it's good to also go to the right source the right place because if you end up um, in some funny facilities hmm, you you may end up regretting for the rest of your life for doing something good and it's something good really and i like what one of the respondents said again we just have to pay some bills see you soon we don't like to eat better more nutritious meals more veggies but, but we want it tasty and easy too hmm no cubes that's the secret made with real ingredients like chicken parsley and garlic and enriched with iron so your meals are better for you and more delicious too that's the cocoa. Let's give it some accolades. Change your world by changing what's on your plate. My baby is always running around, but keeping up is easy with the Huggies Nappy Pants because the 360 comfort big waistband makes it easy to open. Easy on, easy off. So my baby can keep on exploring. If you want to become something, Become a child again. Why be a patient? If you must worry, then worry about winning. Why worry about germs? When you come home, bring tales and stories. Why bring in germs? Shield your families from germs. When Dettol is a part of every household bucket, then you and your family can stay protected from up to 100 illness-causing germs. Everyday use of Dettol keeps my loved ones protected. Why do we do it? Hide. Cover up, tone down, choose boldness. Celebrate the skin you're in and dress with confidence with Nivea Nourishing Cocoa Body Lotion. The triple layered care of deep moisture serum, precious cocoa butter, 
and vitamin E. Enriches your skin for 48 hours. It's time to show off your best skin. Wear your skin with pride every time with Nivea Nourishing Cocoa Body Lotion. Like a bird needs wings to fly, you need skills to be productive. No matter the level of your education, ITF can train you to acquire skills in areas like mechatronics, metal machining, facility technology, electronics and computer networking, information and communication technology, ICT, culinary art, and agriculture. Acquire a skill and transform yourself from being unemployed to becoming even an employer. Be a valuable Nigerian youth. Say no to unemployment and poverty. Industrial Training Fund, developing the nation's human resource. Men do not like overconfident women. Don't touch me without my permission. I, I'm a playful guy and I, I do get carried away sometimes. You are selfish, manipulative, and you are a narcissist. After all I've done for you. What have you done for me? <laughs> she called me Barry. You know my mom doesn't know any better, right? You say that now, but then when you see your mother, you start to act like you're deaf and dumb. You were supposed to be more careful. I've been. Enough. Welcome back. Cases of fathers committing incest with their own biological daughters are indeed worrisome. Well, one state that seems to be continuously recording these bizarre incidents is Ogun State as the police have another case in their hands. They are trying to unravel the mystery behind a 43-year-old Randy father who put his 19-year-old daughter in a family way. Lake Oragbonde has details. Where is a relatively densely populated town in Obafemi, with the local government area of Ogun State, and a town that is close to Lagos. This town is in the news again for another incident of incest as 43-year-old Abiodun Ladakbo is cooling his feet at the police station in Mowe to explain his alleged sexual relationship with his biological daughter to the point of impregnating her. Ogun State Police Public Relations Officer Abimbola Oyeyemi confirmed the story. He stated further that her father has been sleeping with her since February 2022. And each time he has an intercourse with her, he will threaten, he will threaten to kill her if she ever informs anybody about it. And she made us to realize that uh, the father and the mother are separated for quite some time and uh, the father took her custody when her mother remarried and uh, they have been living together since then. It was based on that confession that the uh, police from Mowe Division Headquarters went after the father and they got him arrested. Worried by incessant cases of incest, the police spokesman advises on how to keep it in check. We just want to advise parents, especially mother, that uh, they have a lot to do as far as the, the gay child is concerned. Even if you are with the father and you discover that the, the affinity between the father and the daughter is becoming too, too close to call, you need to, be, to, to take caution. There are a lot of cases of uh, incest, cases of defilement, cases of sexual abuse of underage person. So it is becoming worrisome. And uh, we still want to appeal to the public whenever this type of person is caught. We want them, we need their support to prosecute them. Because in most cases, while we are prosecuting them, they are in the habit of frustrating the effort of the police. The case, according to the police public relations officer, has been transferred to the state police headquarters for further investigation and prosecution. It's one of those kind of stories that you hear and you want to puke. How do you get attracted to your own daughter? So odd. Our last break beckons. We'll take it. Like 
always rely on Go TV to make things a little easier. Upgrade to the next package and we'll boost you to a higher package for free. Go TV. Love it. All I need to say about the uh, about the second River Niger Bridge, um, 20, 21 years ago, as I came onto this throne, um, it would normally take you three to four hours to cross the bridge. I mean, if you were going to Lagos, you spent almost half your time on the bridge. And you were stuck on the bridge before you came across from Asaba this morning. Now, could you imagine how the people of Onicha and Asaba have endured such a situation for over 25, 30 years? This is reality. Um, so uh, we cannot overestimate the importance of uh, the second River Niger Bridge. Uh, to express uh, appreciation to our president, uh, Muhammad Buhari, um, for being the vehicle for the execution of this uh, monumental project. Mami, it is time for us not to leave this old place. What are we airing this mission? We'll find it. I'm not willing to take that chance. I have a big plan. Man. What do you want? I want to send your position at the bar. If anything happens to me, go through the content of this envelope and check everything within. It's done. No one will ever find out the truth. Thanks for being there. The joy of every mother is to see her children and grandchildren succeed in life. What can we then make of a mother that hurts the ones she nurtured and claimed to love? Abiola Ario takes us to one of the towns in Ondo State where a strange and disheartening incident occurred. Apomulano, a sleepy town in the Donri local government area of Undo State, woke up to a tragic incident while Nigerians were preparing for the governorship and state house of assembly elections on Saturday 18th of March 2023. A family of four were allegedly set ablaze while sleeping by one Mama Iforiti Oloro. Mr. and Mrs. Victor Oloro before their untimely death were living at Enyomi Street in the same building together with their two children and Mama Iforiti Oloro, who is Victor's mother. Mama Iforiti Oloro was said to have carried out the heinous act around 2 in the morning. She allegedly claimed that her daughter-in-law did not get her for her, the reason behind her dastardly act. When I came down to the place, the whole room is on fire. So, entering the room, we saw a woman standing. So, the woman would not, did not allow anybody to enter. She's trying to cover the lights so that it will burn the people that are inside. The neighbors also confirmed that the grandma had been locked up in one of the rooms in the building, popularly called Asu Rock, in the community by Mama's eldest child, having been dealt with all efforts by Newsline crew to open the door and get the old woman on camera were rebuffed. A visit to the Federal Medical Center were confirmed that the couple died the following day they were admitted into the born unit of the hospital, while their two children are currently receiving treatment, contrary to online news making the rounds, that the youngest gave up the ghost on admission at the hospital. Uh, the older one suffers some about uh, a third of the body was involved in the burns, and that's a major burn. At least she is in a stable condition now. However, the younger one uh, suffered over 50 percent of the body was involved. Uh, she is quite uh, in a very critical condition, uh, very unstable. The police public relations officer on the state command, Fumilayo Dunlami, explained that the grandmother, who is in her late 60s, has since been taken to an undisclosed hospital for treatment as a result of injuries she sustained in the inferno. The state CID has taken over the case, but we observed that Mama couldn't talk, so she's still receiving treatment at the hospital. We believe by the end of the day, when she's okay, she'll be able to talk to us, then by then we can interrogate her to ask her what really happened. 
investigations revealed that Mamai Furito Oloro had attempted suicide in 2021 as she was found inside a deep well beside her house but was rescued by community members. A woman was trying to open the well. So she met that woman, same woman inside the well. So when they saw the woman, she was not hurt, nothing on. The only thing that she was trying to make some comments, but the comment was not clear. Medical experts said that the action of Mamai Furito Loro could be a sign of mental disorder. It is most likely abnormal for somebody to decide to set a whole family in place. Now the next thing is, why will such a thing happen? The only answer to that is, that person that committed that act must be brought for a review. If some things may have, may have been happening in the past and they had not picked it up, that could have triggered to this very, for her to have gone to this length, then it's not just starting in a day. Mental illness don't just start in one day. As investigation into the case continues, Newsline will keep you updated. We'll surely keep you updated. But I think the first time they found her inside that well was when they should have been monitoring her. And mental health is something we should take serious in this part of the world. Now, on that note, we end today's edition of Newsline. Thank you for being a part of it. We apologize for the initial um, glitch we had at the beginning of the program. But we love the fact that you stayed with us all through. Let's keep a date. Sunday next week. Remember that the fastest and easiest way to becoming a star is to join the NTA to stand against rape and rapists. Good night and God bless our Nigeria.